called The Fingerprints of God. There's another good book by C.S. Lewis called New Christianity. By the way, I'm going to give you all of these references as soon as you, you get these notes or you send me an email. Okay? Basically, a lot of people came up to Christ because of this. For example, Vernon Smith, a Nobel Prize winner, with whom I actually have a privilege to work with. So I work with the Nobel Prize winner, Vernon Smith. He came to Christ because of these moral arguments. Three years ago, he was baptized. And he won a Nobel Prize in economics 2002. Because when he considered the moral evidence, the moral weight of human, basically the, the consciousness that we have, he, was, he couldn't say, he couldn't explain it with science. He said, only God could have created that. Only God could have given us that consciousness. C.S. Lewis' book is probably the classics, New Christianity, to read more about this. Um, number six, number six is what a lot of, again, people take it as granted, but this is very strong. It's called a personal argument. Look at your life. A lot of people have really different life, had very different life before they came to Christ. They had addictions. They had, um, they were, they were, they had diseases. They were, they had so many problems, they had so many problems, and then something changed, just like that, in a moment. You know that naturally this could not have happened. What happened? God came to your life. There's, you, you, you can, you can give me all the evidence against God that you want, but I know that my Redeemer lives. I know in my heart that God exists, and nothing can separate me. Because I have experienced firsthand the act of God in my life. So don't diminish this one as well. You are the evidence of God's existence. You yourself. So again, there are six points that, these are very simple, you know, explanations. But they help, right? I mean, when you present this to the children, you say, look, first of all, Bible teaches us. Okay, good. Second of all, it's, it's, it's basically, it's very natural, it's very logical. All the, all the people in the world believe in God. Then you have a first cause argument. Well, God, who created that? The, the earth, if, who created the universe, if not God. Then you go and you say, look at the design. Look at the design. Look, if this watch, you believe that somebody made it. It couldn't just come out by any chance. Therefore, look at the universe. It's even more complex. God made the universe. And then you go, how about your moral values? How about your consciousness? How about your soul? It's not physical. What can explain it? And again, you point out to God. These are all pointers to God. And then you say, look at all your own life. Look at my life. I know that my life has been transformed. I know that millions of people, I've seen millions of people whose life were transformed because of God. So all together, it points out to the same thing. Um, any questions about this? About, does God exist? Let me go quickly to another thing, creation versus evolution. Okay, that's another thing that kids will ask you. And other questions we will, I'll just give you a quick run through. Creation versus, versus evolution. So there are two theories that explains how everything began. One is evolution. It's the theory that all living creatures are basically coming from the same ancestor. So everything began with the same molecule that caused everything else. So if you believe in evolution, there are a lot of problems here. If you believe in evolution, here are the, here's the consequence of it. First of all, the Bible is wrong. The Bible is wrong because the Bible says that God created everything. Second of all, there is no foundation for right or wrong because it's the molecule that just evolved over time. Third. Racism is totally justified. Because maybe some black people came later from the monkeys, or some Chinese people, or some white Caucasian people, or some... I mean, it's totally justified. Because we know that humans are higher than the dogs. Right? So racism is totally justified. What Hitler did is totally fine. If evolution is true. It's totally fine. Natural selection. Okay? So this is a huge problem. And that's why we should so heavily stand against them. Um, how, what are the evidence right now for evolution? First one, there is this called Miller-Urey uh, Miller experiment. 
The experiment basically shows if you put all these conditions, you put some kind of stuff in it, and you start shaking it and putting some uh, electricity through it, you can create amino acid. Okay? Now, here's the thing. You, you will learn that. If you haven't learned that in your biology class, you will learn this. Amino acid, amino acid is not a living cell. So that experiment does not prove that you can start living life with nothing. It doesn't. You just, in fact, the, the, the step from amino acid all the way to the protein and to the living cell is infinite. Is infinite. It doesn't prove anything. Second thing that you will usually see in your classes is Darwinian tree of life. You see a monkey, then you see some kind of monkey that is bigger, stands a little bit more straight, then you see Neanderthal or some kind of other person that they call a human like, and then you have a human. And you have that kind of tree. You've seen that in the pic that picture? Yeah. So the thing is, the only problem with that argument is that you don't see those missing links. We don't have them. We don't. We see monkeys and we see human. Anything in between doesn't exist. Why? Where did those missing links come? So the scientists go back in the history and they try to, paleontologists, they try to dig and find the evidence to show that, look, there, these are the missing links, we just don't observe them right now. But it's not only human, right, man and monkeys. It's also dogs and other animals. Dogs and cats, you know, they're not linked. Again, we don't see any intermediate links. It's also birds and, uh, and reptiles. They, again, they're not connected. So there's billions of these missing links basically missing. So obviously this is something wrong with this picture. And scientists trying to dig out these evidences and they find out, for example, there's been an article published in um, Nature about Archaeoraptor. They basically, scientists said, look, we found the evidence, here's the dinosaur, and here is the, the it looks like a flying dinosaur that had feathers, you know, and they, they call it Archaeoraptor that can fly. Five years later, they showed that this was a fake. They took a skeleton of dinosaur and they took a bird and they put it together. And they molded those two together, fossils, and they called it a scientific discovery. This was such a big scandal in nature. But a lot of evidence has been fabricated like that to show that these missing links exist. They don't. Okay, so don't be fooled by that. Question, question these things. Whenever you have a question, go onto the internet, look evidence for it, look evidence against it. Don't take it for the for, for granted because you will see that there is a lot of a lot of questions. Um, also, maybe you've seen Haeckel's uh, embryo drawings. It basically shows that there is this embryo of a human. It grows, and then the, the child becomes. Then there is a child. Embryo one. It like it's like this for the frog, and then it grows, and then you have a frog. And what it, they show is that the embryos in the very early stage are very similar across frog, human. Uh, reptiles and all of these different and so they're saying well they look alike therefore they all come from the same thing the only problem is that it's fake that drawing is fake it's still in our books but it's fake this guy in 1960 60s his own faculty members actually kicked him out of the university because he faked that he, he draw the fake uh, thing now we actually can scan and see the embryo. We can actually, you know, we, we have all the technology. And when you look at these embryos of, uh, of real frog, of real fish, of real human, they're so different. There's nothing alike. They're so different, you know. But our children will go and look at those books and they'll say, look, they're the same. This is how the book says it's the drawing. Well, the drawing is fake. I mean, I can draw anything. I can draw here an alien with a big hat and therefore it's true. No, it's not. And you know, we have to know about this. Um, also one of the big, big things right now, DNA, DENCA. We know that 99% of human DNA is similar to monkeys. And here's the conclusion that scientists make. Therefore, monkeys and human have the same beginning. They have the same cell. Because 99% of DNA is the same that you have and the same that I have, and the same that monkey has. Now, if you never thought about this, you will say, yeah, it makes sense, right? It all should come from the same thing. 
Okay, let's do this. Um, I'm gonna, if I had here, I would paint something, one painting, I would put the signature under it, and I would paint another painting, and I would put signature upon it. Okay, and then you would look at these two and you would conclude, well, this painting looks exactly like this. Actually, in fact, the signatures are identical. Therefore, it should have been caused by another painting. Yeah, it was done by the same painting. It was just a different painting that split into these two different paintings. Does that make sense? What does it tell you when you see these two paintings and actually the signature is the same? They're the same artist. Because even the signature is the same. When God makes human and when he makes monkey, he's going to make sure that you actually don't mistake that it's been made by something else. And so when he puts the signature, DNA is the signature of God. Is the signature of God. And it's going to be the same in all these different species. So 99% doesn't prove that, that, that they come from the same ancestor. It proves that the same creator made them. Okay, the same, the same exactly evidence, you just interpret it completely differently. And if kids are being interpreted one way, and you don't point out that, look, this is wrong. I mean, what it tells you is basically God has made one and the other. And that's why they're similar in these 99%. The signature on one under one painting is exactly the same as no, no other one. It means that the creator is the same. Does that make sense? So again, evolution is in a very shaky ground. Once you put all of these...